Okay. Let's see. Uh, chop that off. Start over. Three, two, one. Hey, Shagheads! Curtis Tucker here, a.k.a. Shags, with another episode of A Shaggy Duck Life, the behind-the-scenes personal journal of me doing all kinds of stuff here at Shaggy Duck Studio, from uh, digital media to podcasting, blogging, art, uh, cartooning, all kinds of fun stuff. Living here in the plains of Oklahoma in Enid and give you guys a little bit of insight into uh, my hometown, what's going on here in my life. I got my little uh, mascot dog here. He's hanging out with me tonight and uh, it is football season. So I'm currently traveling from Fayetteville to Norman pretty much every other weekend out of town a lot. So hopefully I will continue to be able to squeeze episodes in. And don't forget, you can hit me up at Shags, S-H-A-G-G-S, Shags at ShaggyDuck.com. Please email me. Let me know what you guys are up to. Let me know if you guys have a podcast or a blog. I would love to uh, plug it on here and also listen to it. And you can also uh, leave me a review or a comment there on iTunes. And uh, I think I'd popped into the uh, top uh, blog podcast for uh, personal journals in Australia for some reason there a little while but uh, thanks to you guys for listening appreciate you all and uh, so this week's episode so if you follow me at all on any social media or the other podcast don't forget I do the 70s buzz podcast and uh, buzzhead radio podcast with Todd Wheeler and so if you've been listening to those you know I have been collecting a little bit of a vinyl here lately. So tonight's episode is kind of the behind the scenes of why I'm collecting vinyl and the name of the episode is why vinyl is cooler than digital and what we're talking about is music. So just right off the bat before anybody jumps all over me on the blog or on the podcast, I'm not saying that vinyl is better than digital music. I'm not saying that vinyl sounds superior to uh, digital music. I'm saying vinyl is cooler than digital music. And I've got about 20 reasons that I'm going to give you real quick on this podcast. But uh, to go back in time and kind of find out why all of a sudden vinyl means anything to me at all, you got to go all the way back to the 1970s, and that's uh, the decade, the greatest decade known to man that I grew up, and that's when I started listening to music. And as a young tyke in the early, early 70s, of course, uh, listened to 45s, would run over to a uh, store called Woolco, and at Woolco, I would buy uh, blacklight posters and incense and 45 records and then slowly moved up to uh, buying albums. And then the uh, Columbia Record Club came along and I got like, I don't know, 14 albums for a penny. And uh, so that really stocked my collection. Uh, had a really cheesy old turntable and then eventually, uh, I can't remember if my mom helped me, but we found like a, a console turntable at a garage sale and uh, it was a, uh, it was a, a, vi a turntable slash radio slash 8-track player and you know had the speakers in the fake wood and all that. So um, real quick, just want to shout out and say hi and I'm waving at you all here on the YouTube channel. Don't forget, if you guys are listening to this on uh, audio only, you can flip over to uh, youtube.com slash Curtis Tucker TV and you can see me in my um, my Booberry uh, t-shirt. So one of my favorite t-shirts. Uh, even though I didn't eat as much Booberry as I did Frankenberry, uh, I think I like the Booberry t-shirt better. But anyway, so let's get back to vinyl. So so grew up in the 1970s on vinyl. Uh, a little bit of 8-track. Uh, for me, 8-track didn't last very long. I think it was already on its way out by the mid-70s. Uh, cassettes popped up. Um, it wasn't long before cassettes pretty much took over. Uh, we pretty much thought vinyl was going to go away, and but we had you know our collection, and I think I probably had about 50 to 60 albums 
Uh, and uh, but of course, just you know, being in a vehicle, all the vehicles started coming with uh, cassette players, or you know, you could buy the uh, the portable cassette players that you could. So I had a Jeep, and I had it was one of those deals where you could hook in the oh the housing, and then you could pull out your cassette player and take it with you uh, so it wouldn't get stolen out of your Jeep. So anyway, so uh, we slowly moved to cassettes uh, through the end of the 70s and the 80s and then uh, MTV came along. Uh, we we're you know watching more of our music on television. CDs had become popular and then uh, basically CDs killed everything. Uh, killed vinyl, killed 8-track, killed cassette. And uh, we did CDs uh, for a couple of decades, uh, and then Apple started coming out with uh, some digital music and came out with the iPod, or the Shuffle, I can't remember which, I think it was just the iPod. Um, you know, we had the Walkman there in the late 70s with, for cassettes, but it uh, wasn't really until the uh, Apple iPod came out that digital music really took off, and so uh, even, uh, CDs uh, are pretty much obsolete. They kind of went away. And now uh, we've gone from digital music to streaming music to uh, from radio to satellite, which is no commercial 24 seven. You can get it no matter you know where you're at. So, so, uh, so today, uh, you know, there's a lot of reasons why people prefer digital um, over everything else. But uh, of course, you know, the one thing downside to vinyl is you can't take it in your car with you. And so vinyl is definitely something that you have at home or in your office. And so, so, um, so I graduated from high school in 1981, went off to college and I got out of junior college, graduated in 1983. So my roommate uh, was a guy that was in my rock band uh, throughout high school and he and I roomed together uh, for the two years at junior college. Well, he brought a turntable. So I listened to albums uh, 81 through 83 in our dorm room <clears throat> on his turntable. But then um, we went off to uh, different colleges uh, that third year and I moved into a house, house with some guys and uh, couldn't really, you know, uh, bring that big stereo turntable eight track with me. And so basically from about 1983 uh, till now, till modern times, I stopped listening to vinyl. I literally probably have not listened to a vinyl record since 1983. And so, you know, somewhere along the line, we sold the uh, turntable console at a garage sale. So even when I'd go home, uh, on the weekends or visit or whatever, there wasn't really anywhere to play my vinyl. So all the vinyl got stuck in a box and it would follow me from house to house. And, you know, I, I worked in Oklahoma City for a while and then uh, ended up living with different people and getting married and getting married and moving and moving and moving. And so finally in about nine, or, uh, 2012, uh, these records had been following me around since about, you know, 1982, so 82, 92, 2000, 2012, you know, 30 years these albums in this box had been following me around. I had not played them, and so we were having a big garage sale because we were getting ready to move into the house that I'm living in now. It was when we moved into it the first time. And so I thought, you know, if I haven't messed with uh, these things that are in the garage or if I haven't worn these things, I'm going to get rid of them to just kind of clean out and start over and make room and not have to worry about them anymore. So I put the albums out in the driveway uh, of the garage sale. And I think I was, you know, had like, you know, two or three bucks per record on them. And a guy came along, which I actually knew and I still know, and uh, he offered me $50 for the whole box. And I had, you know, I had played a lot of them and, uh, you know, none of them were in plastic and, you know, they, you know, I don't know, I can't remember exactly how good a condition or, you know, I'm sure they were in decent condition. I never did have an expensive stereo or an expensive needle though. So uh, they did get played on cheap turntables with cheap needles. But uh, so he bought the whole box 
for $50, didn't think anything about it. Um, and that was, like I said, about 2012. And so now we're at 2022. And, and so, you know, about a year ago, um, we moved back into this house and uh, built me an office. And so I decided to, uh, because now I'm heavy into the 70s nostalgia and doing the 70s Buzz podcast and, and all this other stuff, I thought, you know, I'm going to decorate my office uh, with a 70s and a mid-century modern and a retro kind of motif. Uh, you know, and so you can see that behind me with the uh, Michael Knight uh, mid-century modern chair and the old... Uh, soda coolers and the beads hanging from my door and the fair faucet poster and and all that stuff and and so i thought you know about a year ago and i got the lava lamp and um so i thought you know uh and and so you know even longer than a year ago but uh a year ago i realized that vinyl was actually making a comeback and so vinyl was actually outselling cds so cds are, are you know, pretty much toast, but vinyl uh, started making a comeback, and then I started her hearing of these uh, record stores that were either uh, getting popular again, or they were just new ones were popping up, and so, um, so probably a little over a year ago, uh, I set out to buy a turntable, and uh, I already had uh, um, surround sound for my television, I had a receiver, uh, from our surround sound setup, um, so I basically had everything I needed except just the turntable. So spent uh, several months researching and finally bought a really cool turntable and didn't have any vinyl. But you know it was kind of part of the whole, you know, motif. I, I two hundred, three hundred dollars, I can't remember, somewhere around there, I think, for the turntable. And so then I set out to buy some vinyl. So I hit a couple of record stores, um, started buying vinyl, and um, so, and that was probably about a year ago, um, or maybe even just less than a year ago. And so as of uh, this weekend, I think I'm up to about 40 vinyl albums. And so what I've kind of been doing is pretty much buying all of the albums that I had in that box that I sold for $50. And so the, especially the ones that I really liked, I'm rebuying those, adding a few new ones, and then there were some in that collection that I just didn't really uh, ever listen to, <clears throat> and so I'm not buying those. So, But what I think is right now I'm sitting at about 40, 40 albums that I have purchased and selected in the past year, but then I've probably got another 20 that I inherited from my mom, and those are like uh, monkeys and beetles and uh, Beach Boys, and um, they're not in super good condition, but uh, but I've got those, and so those are kind of a, a second subset of what I've got. But so I think uh, having about 40 now, and I'm getting close to you know what I had originally. I have a feeling I'll probably buy maybe about 10 more. And I'll probably shut it down and call uh, 50 albums good just because, you know, it is a little more convenient and I've got access to a lot more songs uh, on uh, streaming and digital. But that does not uh, take away from the fact that vinyl is still cooler than digital music. And uh, so part of my 40 albums uh, that I put together, you know, there were some that I had to have. They're my my pinnacle and that's uh, the Boston's first album had to have that Fleetwood Mac rumors uh, probably best album of all time uh, Kansas left overture uh, with Karen wayward son got that uh, for some reason I just uh, love the Warriors uh, soundtrack took me a while to find that one uh, found one in really great condition I've got that one um, Ario you get what you uh, play for uh, live, uh, love that one. I've got that one, and then just uh, you know, lots of sticks and Journey and Rolling Stones and uh, Eagles and and things like that. So so I've put uh, pretty much the whole collection uh, back together, minus a few. Uh, got uh, 
Billy Joel Piano Man. It took me a little while to find that one. I have added Don McLean, American Pie, which I did not have before. I've added that one to my collection. So, so anyway, so here is the list, my list, my opinion of why vinyl music, vinyl records are cooler, cooler than digital and digital music. So, so to me, to me, vinyl music has more of a unique sound. It, it doesn't sound exactly like digital. So I can, you know, I can play songs uh, from a CD or songs from Alexa through my stereo system, and it sounds a little bit different. Not a huge amount, I mean, uh, but it sounds different when I play a record. And to me, it just sounds a little bassier, a little um, richer. I don't, not clearer, but just richer. It just seems, you know, it just, it just almost, for some reason to me, records kind of give you that feeling that you're there with the artist. And it, it may be psychological, it may be, who knows, but uh, you got the spinning record there on your turntable. Uh, you know, so vinyl music, I think, has a more unique, maybe not better, but more unique sound. Number two, albums are actually tangible objects that you can feel, you can hold, you can collect, you pull the sleeve out, um, you can display your collection, you can stack them all up on a shelf, and then when people come into your studio or your house, they can see your collection, they can pull albums out, they can see what artists you like. You know, it's it's there, it's a physical item to display, to show, to share, to hold, um, to have spread out on the floor, you know, to have, you know, you look at them and, and memories immediately come back to you. And so you're probably going to notice that maybe a lot of these have to do with memory and nostalgia. And that has a lot to do with why um, vinyl albums are cooler than uh, digital. Number three, uh, not only are, you know, you've got the albums and they're tangible, but the albums have art, have, have something on the outside. They have a picture, they have, uh, you know, a painting or, you know, something, a logo or something cool on the front of the album. Uh, they've also got something on the back of the album, which is kind of like uh, in the old days when we would sit at the table and read the back of a cereal box. It's always fun to read the back of an album. Uh, usually the band member names and the songs that are on the album, you know, just some facts. And then a lot of albums you can uh, open up and there's extra uh, information and photos. And then sometimes with the sleeve has information on it and or there's an extra, you know, piece of information in with the sleeve. And so it's all of this extra pullouts and photos and stories and words and, and pictures that you don't get you do not get with uh, digital music, even though you know sometimes you can see the little square of what the album would look like if you actually owned the actual physical album. But yeah, it just does no, it does you no good to see that. You you've got to actually have the album in front of you. You know, the other another thing about albums is out of all of the platforms, you know, eight track and cassette and uh, CD and digital. Albums are the biggest. They're, you know, they take up the, the most space and you can see the album cover better than any of the other covers. Uh, number four, uh, as we have found here recently, albums increase in value. So if you kept your album, especially uh, if you kept the uh, album art, the album cover in good condition and then the actual vinyl inside in good condition, um, I mean, you know, six, seven dollar albums are now selling for twenty five, thirty dollars. Uh, even you know the used ones. Uh, there are reissues. There are um, new production of some of the older albums. Uh, those are selling for twenty five to you know forty five dollars, depending on which album it is. Uh, some of the old, harder to get albums or collector albums are you know in the hundreds and thousands of dollars if you have one of those. And uh, there's some cool websites out there that kind of give you a value of your uh, record collection, so you can check that out. But anyway, so uh, digital uh, music is not going to go up in value. It is what it is, and so there is no, you know, you just buy it 
and uh, that's all there is to it. You're not going to, it's not going to become any more valuable. And I can't, you know, we don't know that vinyl is going to stay uh, expensive as more and more vinyl comes out. I'm sure the prices will drop uh, and the popularity of vinyl, I don't think it'll ever, ever go away, but it may not be, I think we're going through a, a spurt of 70s nostalgia right now. And so I think that's why they're doing so well. I uh, would love it if that would continue forever. But of course, uh, you know, nostalgia ebbs and flows and, and all that. So uh, another thing, uh, another reason that albums, vinyl albums are cooler is, uh, so when I buy uh, digital music, I normally very rarely buy an entire you know, I guess album or, you know, collection of an artist, you know, I'll pick, you know, three, four songs off of that album or that collection and I'll just buy those songs. I rarely, you know, just go buy the whole digital because why, you know, why if you don't know what the songs are. So, uh, so, you know, I've got a whole uh, collection of songs that are just one, two songs from each group or each album and not the entire album, just rarely, rarely. Um, can't even think if I've ever bought. I'm sure there's probably one or two, but uh, maybe not. Uh, I think soundtracks I probably have. But so anyway, so uh, vinyl album. You know, once you put that album on and the needle on, you you want to sit down and relax, or you're doing something, and it forces you to hear the songs from a group that you may have never heard before. Now, not every song on every album is going to be good or worth listening to, but, you know, what I've learned is, especially collecting some of this vinyl, especially the records that I didn't have in the 70s, is uh, there's a lot of extra songs on some of those albums that are just as good as the hit songs that you heard on the radio. They, they just weren't chosen to be, you know, released as singles or hit songs and so you're kind of forced to uh, get to hear all of the extra songs and find out how you know good the artist actually is uh, so up to number six number six and now remember back when we had comic books um, those were tangible uh, I've still got my box of comic books fortunately I never did sell that those at a garage sale but uh, but we used to trade them you know we used to Get together and if I had a you know maybe an extra one you know two of one I could trade one and and that's same with albums you can trade and sell so you can go through your collection and if there's you know five albums that you rarely rarely ever listen to and you're not a big fan of you can take them into the record store and you can trade them for you know some albums that you're going to listen to more or you want to experiment with or you can just outright sell them and get your money back for them and so, uh, so albums are fun to uh, trade and sell, which you can't do with vinyl. Uh, now, some people may look at this as a negative, but uh, being a guy from the 1970s, albums, some of them have scratches and static in them. And that nostalgia of hearing, you know, those little itty bitty scratches every now and then is kind of cool. And you can only get that on an album. And so I think that's uh, pretty cool. Uh, number eight, shopping for albums can become addicting and become a hobby. And so for the you know the past year, there's a lot of albums that I've been looking for, uh, like the Warriors album. So every record store I passed, I would pop in and see if they had a copy of the Warriors soundtrack. I never did find it. Um, walking into a store, I finally found it. I, I found I did some different ways of searching. On Google, I found a small record store up in the northeast somewhere, and they had a copy. And so I ordered uh, the copy right out of their store, and they uh, mailed it to me. So uh, it's kind of fun um, and, and addicting to, especially for me, putting my collection back together because I knew kind of the ones that I was looking for. Um, you can spend hours searching. And what, another thing that's cool is you rarely go into a record store and not have a great conversation with the owner, the person working, or somebody else in the store. So it allows you to get out there and talk to humans. You get to talk about uh, the different groups, the album art, um, you know, just a whole bunch of cool different things, where you're from, because I visit a lot of record stores while we're um, out of town, out of state, you know, on the road. And so uh, it just kind of opens up uh, to a lot of different avenues and a lot of uh, 
interaction. Uh, number nine, album covers can be framed and used as wall art. And so you probably can't really see, but behind me, so when I went to Graceland, I got a, 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 a strand of green shag carpet and I've got one of my Elvis album covers and that green shag carpet and my ticket to Graceland all framed on the wall behind me. And then I also, at a cheap trick concert, uh, Rick Nielsen flipped out you know, one of the picks and I snagged it. And so that is uh, also framed with a cheap trick album. And so albums uh, are really cool to frame and uh, hang in different parts of your house or your office. Um, number 10, flipping an LP causes you to get off your butt and out of your chair. So, you know, sometimes I get stuck uh, if I'm listening to digital music or some days, uh, you know, especially way in the past, there might be some days where I would go eight, sometimes 10 hours and not listen to anything. I'd get so involved in my work, you know, I, now I'd stop and, you know, go to the restroom or go eat or something. But if you play an album, it forces you to get up more often, which, you know, health-wise is going to benefit you to get out of your seat, move around a little bit, uh, keeps you awake. Um, and so that's kind of one of the cool things about albums is you get to, you know, flip the album and then you have to go find another album and replace it with. Uh, number 11, 70s at Nostalgia. You know, it's that entire Vinyl, playing vinyl records is an experience. There's the, you know, flipping through the albums and then you find the one you want. And then you, you pull the sleeve out and you pull the album out of the sleeve. Now, right now I don't have a cleaning device, you know, but a lot of times we'll get the little cleaning tool, put the album, you know, I I put the album down on the turntable, then I turn the tur turntable on, it starts spinning. If I had one of the cleaning tools, I would clean the album. Then you put the needle on, I close the lid to keep the dust off, and then you listen to the album. So, you know, it's a whole experience. It's that whole finding the right album, pulling it out, looking at it to make sure there's not a lot of dust on it. Uh, it's just kind of a cool deal. Reminds me of being back in the 70s. Um, the whole buying of the turntable was an experience. That's kind of cool, uh, getting to see all of the sound equipment. You know, there's... Uh, the turntables, there's needles, there's the arms, there's, uh, God, there's so many parts you can pick out on a turntable, but then you got the receiver and you got the speakers and you've got just all kinds of stuff. So not only is the record buying an experience, but buying the turntable uh, can be uh, an entire experience. And so, you know, like I said, I think I spent uh, two or three hundred dollars on the turntable. I've probably spent close to four hundred dollars on placing, uh, replacing my fifty dollar box of uh, uh, vinyl records. So again, I'll probably buy about maybe ten more and then going to call it good and that'll be my entire probably vinyl collection. Um, number 13, some music can only be found on vinyl. Yeah, there's some uh, obscure groups that uh, just have not uh, converted their music over to uh, digital. And so if you go through a record store, especially in some of the weird sections, uh, you can find some groups that you're just, you'll never find on, on uh, digital. And so uh, you get to find some really cool kind of weird groups um, on vinyl. So check that out. Uh, let's see, you get to help out a, a local record store owner, you know, you get to help him succeed. And so, uh, you know, a lot of these guys, uh, I think, uh, grew up in the 70s and they've opened these record stores and, uh, you know, they're just trying to make a living and they're entrepreneurs and they're trying to continue the nostalgia and bring back the feelings that we had in the 70s. And, and you know, what I notice in almost all record stores is you know, the owners or the guy working always tries to play really cool albums in the store and they turn them up loud and, and you know, uh, there's, there's high, um, I'm trying to think of some of the different movies, but, you know, when you go into a record store, you want to hear a record playing and you want to hear it kind of loud. And so it's kind of cool to get in there and uh, listen to what the owner or the guy working is suggesting, you know, what he's playing, and then you get to talk to him. But uh, when you buy the vinyl from that store, again, you're helping out the local economy. You're helping uh, somebody uh, with their dream on owning a store. So I say kudos to all of you guys out there, all of you guys and gals that have uh, record stores. 
Uh, it's pretty cool. Uh, number 15, which goes along with that, is while you're shopping for your vinyl, they've also got a lot of uh, stickers, posters, t-shirts, uh, stuff like that. Some of them actually sell 45s. I've seen some of them sell uh, cassette players or cassettes. I haven't, I don't know that I've seen anybody selling eight tracks, but uh, you know, it's a whole shopping experience. You know, it's pretty cool going into a store and looking for uh, albums from the 70s, and then there's a uh, t-shirts from the 70s and uh, stickers and, and all kinds of stuff. So it's kind of that whole cool nostalgia shopping experience. Uh, this one's kind of obscure, but uh, you can find a Danny Bonaducci autograph. And so uh, Danny Bonaducci, uh, Danny from Partridge Family. Uh, the Partridge Family put out quite a few albums. And so what Danny will do when he's in a town and finds a record store, he will go in and find a Partridge Family album and right there uh, on social media, he'll film himself, video himself, and he'll sign it and say, hey, I'm at this record store, and he'll put it back in, and then, you know, if somebody just happens to be in that town and see that video, they can zip over there and get a free, well, they're not free, but, you know, whatever the cost of the album is, they'll, they'll have an album that was just signed by Danny Bonaducci. So kudos to you, Danny, for doing that. That's really cool. Uh, that does not happen. Uh, with digital music. Number 17, people that collect vinyl have a name. They are called audiophiles, and so I don't know that people that collect uh, digital music uh, have a name. They're, they don't really have their own community. I guess maybe they have their own playlist, but uh, audiophiles have their own communities, their own groups. Uh, they get together, they buy, sell, trade, uh, talk, you know. There are websites where they get together and, and uh, give facts and ideas on albums. So uh, if you're, I am not an audiophile. I don't think I ever will be. That's why I'm probably going to stop at 50 albums and, and call it good. Number 18, um, The Hunt. Uh, I think they call it crate, crate digging. And so, you know, you can spend hours. If, if you're really into vinyl and wanting to find something new or find an, a specific album, you can spend hours in a record store and so the hunt becomes a challenge it becomes an adventure uh, it can turn a trip to a you know we go out of town and my wife wants to go in the boutiques you know it gets for a guy it gets a little boring when the girls go off shopping but if uh, there's a record store on the same block it makes it a lot of fun to go in there and hunt for an album that you've been looking for. It just adds a lot more adventure to your trips. Uh, this last weekend we went to Arkansas, so I went to a record store, picked up several great albums there, and then my wife wanted to stop and grab a snack in Tulsa on the way back. I knew there just happened to be a record store across the street. While she was getting her snack, I ran into there, grabbed a couple of more albums, and so uh, just added fun to my uh, weekend getting all that vinyl this last weekend. Number 19, um, garage sales and thrift stores have never been so much fun. So uh, if you ever go garage sailing or to thrift stores, uh, you know, you might be looking for certain things, but it's always fun to flip through their albums and see what's out there. Now, I will say that, uh, the well, you know, it just kind of depends. A lot of people are now selling their albums to record stores because they're getting, you know, decent prices. And so a lot of the records that you find at thrift stores and garage sales may not be in great condition, but when you're picking them up for a buck or two or three, you know, if you can get a couple of songs out of them without scratches, uh, it's, it's well worth it. So, and along with that is uh, some albums only cost a buck or two, uh, making the cost per song much, much cheaper than uh, uh, digital music. And so this last weekend, I happened to see the soundtrack for St. Elmo's Fire, and I love a lot of uh, soundtracks. And so, you know, the the lead song for St. Elmo's Fire, I thought, well, that's a great song. You know, surely this album's going to be full of great songs. And, you know, there was jazz in the, in the movie and stuff. And uh, so I paid three bucks uh, for the album. It's a cool uh, album cover. It's got all of the actors and actresses, you know, sitting all together on the front of the album. So it's, if anything, it's it's a really cool reminder of the 80s, uh, 1985. But I just listened to that this morning and, ugh, 
other than the the theme songs from the movie, the other songs were uh, just super duper 80s. I don't even remember any of them from the movie. I don't know how they got added on the soundtrack. I must have missed something somewhere. Uh, but uh, so anyway, but you know, I spent three bucks, and so I got the you know the theme song, and then another song that sounds kind of like the theme song, um, you know, for three bucks. And so uh, so vinyl, if you uh, find a lot of you know some albums cheap, you can get your music a lot cheaper. So there's my list of 20 reasons why vinyl music is cooler than digital. So I hope you guys uh, liked that. Uh, let me know if you guys are still collecting vinyl, if you've always had your vinyl, if you still have a turntable. How often do you listen to your vinyl? Uh, let me know. Shags, S-H-A-G-G-S dot com. You can also go to patreon.com slash shags and uh, contribute there if you want to help me out or go to youtube.com slash Curtis Tucker TV. You can see me waving at you right now with my Booberry uh, t-shirt on and I appreciate you guys again for listening to the podcast. I hope you have enjoyed this episode. Let me know somewhere along the line if you enjoyed it or not and uh, hopefully I will be back very soon with another episode of A Shaggy Duck Life. You guys appreciate you guys and we will talk to you guys soon. 